Researching the market whilst you're saving for your deposit is a great idea. If you can understand what a good buy is versus what a bad buy is, you're gonna make tens if not hundreds of thousands of dollars over the next couple of years. Depending on your plan, buying the right home in the right area at the right time can help leapfrog your wealth and get you to your dream forever home quicker. Because let's face it, the first home we buy isn't gonna be the home we're in forever. We're only gonna really traditionally stay in it for five to seven years and then move on. But if you can understand these next couple of points and buy a property that is in line with as many of them as possible, you're gonna see substantially stronger growth than a property that isn't ticking as many boxes. Point number one, school catchment zones. If your property is in a highly desired school zone, it is going to be substantially more desirable for a future buyer. Therefore, your property price is going to increase sharply as time goes on. You can check out the link below to see a website that will show you all the school catchment zones in your area and do a little homework based on that. Points number two and three are sort of combined. So we've got firstly public transport and then we've got shops and restaurants. So public transport and shops and restaurants are going to appeal to a demographic of buyer who are keen to ditch their car and car related expenses. So your property price is just gonna grow because you're gonna have a stronger demand for people that wanna be able to walk to the train station and catch the train to work versus driving to the city. Point number four, future zoning changes. We're gonna have some links below to some websites you can do some homework on for yourself, such as planning maps online and landchecker.com.au. These are quite uh, useful resources that you can have a look at what the property's current zoning is. So it might be residential zone one. So that's just your yeah, vanilla, very standard uh, zoning for a property where you can just construct a house or potentially uh, two units, depending on the council's regulations. But if you were to buy a property that is say general residential zone one, and it gets rezoned to commercial zone one or activity center zone one or urban growth zone two, you can do a whole bunch of things. So for example, urban growth zone two is medium density residential. If your standard general residential zone gets changed to urban growth zone two, you can go from building one house on your block to building an apartment block. And an apartment site has a very, very, a substantially higher return for an investor than just a single single house for sale. Therefore, your single house on this new uh, newly zoned block of land is gonna be worth substantially more to an investor. Finally, point number five, freeway access. A property out in particularly suburban Melbourne where you're only a minute or two away from the freeway on-ramp is substantially better than a property where you're gonna to need to sit in bottlenecks just to get onto the freeway. It's a total pain in the ass. For example, in Melbourne's west, there's a suburb called Point Cook. Now, Point Cook has several notorious bottlenecks and every day the locals are steaming to get in and out, be it Point Cook Road or Snides Road. But if you are you know, closer to the freeway access, you don't need to deal with this 10 to 15 to 20 minute headache every day. See below, we've got several resources for you to use. Obvious one being Google Maps. Then we've got landchecker.com.au as well as planning maps online. Now planning maps online needs to be taken into consideration with whatever council you're looking to purchase in. For example, if you're out in Wyndham or Moorabool, etc., you're gonna to need to see what kind of zoning uh, rules and changes there are.